If the Bank of Canada raises interest rates as little as 0.25%, then 35% of all Canadians will go bankrupt. Yep, that was an article that I covered here on this channel before the first Bank of Canada's interest rate hike last March. And that news really seemed to strike a chord with people here on YouTube because that video has now been viewed over 220,000 times with 1,268 comments and 8,500 clicks of that sweet, sweet like button. And since then, the BOC increased rates the equivalent of 17 quarter point increases. And now it's a year later and the sun still appears to be rising and setting every day so far. And not a single one of my friends, family, clients, or colleagues have gone bankrupt. So in today's video, I'm going to give you my opinions on where we are now, a year after the video that changed my YouTube channel forever. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you would like to stay up to date on my market here in Surrey, BC. And just for fun, I think it would be super cool if we could also get this video 8,500 likes, but only you can make that happen. So it's in your hands. So thank you for that. And now onto the video. Now it's true that household debt is mounting for a lot of Canadians and new interest payments at much higher interest rates are going to cause problems. And I happen to see a news story on city news that I'm going to share with you here today, because apparently homeowners are starting to have to sell their properties due to these increased payments. And those homeowners are not only going to lose their homes, but they will now shift into rental markets. And of course, I'm going to give you my opinion at the exact same time. Because if you subscribed a year ago because of this BOC bankruptcy video, well, today's problem is much the same as the problems that I highlighted in that video. So without any further ado, let's hop in and look at this city news story. Interest rates are going up yet again, with the Bank of Canada announcing its eighth hike in less than a year. And while this move is being used to tackle sky high inflation, it's also forcing some to sell their homes. Final nail was in the coffin was the second to last interest rate hike. We just basically hung on to this house as long as we could. So the second to last interest rate hike, this news story was actually put out prior to the last one. So this is three ago. So this wasn't the quarter that just came out. This wasn't the 50 that came out before that. It was the 75 in September. Durham Region resident Laura Feeney reached out to City News after putting her house of 18 years on the market. She tells me when the pandemic hit, they did $75,000 in renovations. But Let's stop there first. Okay, so she's lived there for 18 years, to be clear. Now, I don't want to, you know, what, what, blame this lady for her particular situation, but I want to give a real-life example. So she's lived there for 18 years, and she just did a $75,000 renovation. But can no longer make ends meet amid soaring interest rates. We were told by our broker that um, with interest rates continuing to go up, we would be looking at a mortgage of um, almost $3,900 a month. For the so, okay, let's do that math super quick. $3,900 a month. I'm assuming that she's not refinancing right now and that maybe she's caught up in this whole variable mess of people that took variable rates hoping that they would stay down. So let's say now they did the reno, I don't know, a year ago, year and a half ago, and they took out an extra $75,000 at that time. Now, they said the reno 75 k Who knows if they took out 75 k or more? They don't explain that so far in the story. But let's just say, for instance, this is somebody at a $3,900 approximate payment on a variable rate. And let's say today that rate has gone up to, I don't know, let's call it 6.5%. Well, if I would have to guess on the math on that, we're looking at slightly somewhere around a $600,000 mortgage or maybe as much as, I don't know, 610 or 615 for a house that was purchased 18 years ago. Now, I bought my particular home nine or 10 years ago. And in my marketplace, my house value today, even after a 20% drop, is still well more than double what I paid for it nine and a half or so years ago. This lady 
particularly is 18 years. So she very likely paid, again, maybe even half of that price at that time. So if this was my market, not, not saying it is, but if this was my market, we could have been talking about a 400, maybe a 380 to $400,000 home of which if it's similar, she likely very well now owes $600,000 on. So more on that in a sec. First time in decades, Laura and her husband are about to be renters and will be paying $2,500 a month, an amount she calls ridiculous but says is more manageable than their mortgage. The Bank of Canada says, well, we're trying to stave off a recession. Uh, hold on a minute. You're trying to stave off a recession, yet people are losing their houses and they're forced to either A, boot back in with, with their parents or B, go back to renting after the f I wouldn't say they're trying to stave off a, a recession I would say they're trying to cause a re recession because inflation is out of control inflation doesn't necessarily happen in recessionary times not that I would know I'm not an economist, but let's keep going. For seven interest rate hikes, inflation only nudged down slightly from a 40-year high of more than 8% to just over 6%. Well, that is because inflation takes time to come down. These, The Bank of Canada themselves say that it probably takes 18 months for interest rates to take effect. And I don't disagree with that. When interest rates came down to 0.25% at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of the best rates were not even offered until, I don't know, maybe nine or 10 months after that at best, some, some even a year or 18 months after. So yeah, I would suspect that given the interest rates that have happened and the interest rate increases that have happened over the last little bit, we're not even going to see the, like those monster ones in July. We may not even see the full effect of those interest rate increases until this July to December. And in the way came falling housing prices and soaring consumer debt. Some people's mortgage payments have doubled. And so trying to navigate through that when incomes are not going up, let's face it, Shauna, people are not getting 6% raises. Now we're seeing debt levels out of record now as well. So the debt to income ratio right now is $1.84. So that means for every dollar a Canadian makes, they owe $1.84. Now I have particular thoughts. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about the income to debt ratio. So $1.84 for every dollar that they make. But Let's be honest about the debt to income ratio. This is not debt that has to be paid back in the same year. So mortgages are 25, 20, 25, 30 years. Not necessarily the worst thing to owe a lot on your mortgage if you have the ability to pay it off over a long period of time. So sure, you make $60,000 this year. And sure, according to their calculations, maybe you owe $110,000. This is bad if it's credit card debt and that debt is high interest and it's stacking up very quickly. If it's mortgage debt, well, the recent interest rates aren't helping, but generally speaking, uh, debt to income ratio is a little bit of uh, a shock stat as far as I'm concerned. The Bank of Canada has signaled that this could be the last rate hike for a while, but with many mortgages coming up for renewal in the next 12 months and rental costs continuing to soar, financial expert Lori Campbell says it will likely be a very challenging year for many. My concern, Shauna, is how much more Canadians can bear before this kind of tips over the edge. Unfortunately, we're all going to have to tighten our belts and seriously look at our finances to get through this. Now, the Bank of Canada is hopeful that the general inflation number will come down to 3% by the end of this year and then down to the goal of 2% sometime in 2024. Shauna Hunt, City News. So there you go. Well, yeah, there's a lot of people that are going to have really increased mortgage payments, particularly the people that gambled on variable rate mortgages. I've been quite vocal in the past. I am not a variable rate guy. I prefer fixed payments and I prefer fixed payments for the exact reason of certainty. These people all gambled on what they thought was very certain. They were given advice that they all thought was very certain. And unfortunately, this is the one time in the previous 40 years where it was the wrong year to gamble on variable. But it looks to me like the spending habits of Canadians and using their homes as ATM machines to feed consumer needs, well, 
that might be the real issue because I'm going to assume the particular individual in this story to get to a mortgage of an estimated $600,000 if they bought their property 18 years ago, they have refinanced multiple times and likely owe more now than they ever even bought the home for previously. Let's say, for instance, they took a 25-year mortgage when they bought the home 18 years ago. Well, if that's the case, they should probably only owe about $165,000 and be able to pay that down over the next seven years if they weren't continuously refinancing and pulling out more money to cover their cost of living. And on top of all of that, I must point out that on my podcast called The Tom Story Show, my co-host, coincidentally, with the same name, well, Tom does a lot of media. And one thing he has discovered is that often when the media outlets reach out to agents like him, it's to try and find people in bad situations like this one. Not because a lot of people are in these positions, but rather they have already written a story and now they just need to find a victim that fits the parameters of the outcome that they've already written. Just like I recently explained in this video here on the channel. Please let me know in the comments if you are worried about losing your home or if you'll be just fine. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, click the like button, and we'll see you in a couple of days.